Hey everybody, I'm Joe from BackcountryBanter.com and today we're going to show you how to pack a backpack properly. So, there's three things you kind of want to focus on when you're packing your pack and that is weight distribution, accessibility, so ease of access for things you need while you're on trail, and structure, so actually making sure the pack holds together well, it's not loose and flopping around on you. So, if you'll notice the way the pack sits on me here, it's kind of like a big lever. So, when you're packing your pack, you want your weight to be, first off, you want all of your weight to be on your hips. Your shoulders shouldn't be carrying any weight for you. It should all be going directly to your hips. Shoulder straps should be more of just a, a way to keep your pack vertical. Now, for weight distribution, because this is a huge lever on your hips pivoting, you want your weight to be low and as close to your back as possible. So as your weight gets higher, it gets more leverage on you. It becomes more of a weight that kind of pulls you around. And as it becomes further from your back, it actually gets more leverage as well. So heavier gear should go lower and closer to your back as you're backpacking. Now, go ahead and pull all of this gear out and show you how we actually pack a pack. And in here we have all of your typical backpacking stuff, your sleeping bag, clothing, sleeping pad, food bag, a ditty bag with random accessories, electronics, stuff like that, a tent, and a cook set. And so every backpack's a little different. This one's a Gregory Zulu 55. It has a built-in frame. So it's pretty good at creating its own structure, but with other packs, some that have no frame at all or some that just have a foam frame sheet, Packing with structure is going to help those packs carry a load better and be a little more sturdy as you're hiking. They're not going to wobble around on you or create too much trouble. So first things first, I have an empty pack here. I like to pack with structure. So first thing first, uh, sleeping pad. A lot of people, this is a newer X slide, a lot of people actually fold up their pads the way it comes in the packaging, which is a much smaller, so it is a little more compact, but I find that rolling up the thermorest this way, first off, is really easy when you're doing it in the morning, packing up. Super simple, you don't have to do any complex folds, you just roll your sleeping pad into a tube. And not only is it easy, but it makes packing your backpack easier, and it actually provides some structure which is essential for, like I said, non-framed backpacks. So first thing I do, take my sleeping bag or my sleeping pad roll, stuff it into the corner of the pack, and just it creates a vertical bar along this side of the backpack. Now, for those of you that have a more compact tent, you can actually stick it inside your pack. I know a lot of people like to put their tents along the bottom here, and that's kind of the next best choice if you can't fit your tent inside your bag. But if you can, this is another great way to create structure. And I'll stuff it just like I did the sleeping pad. You can see it's vertical here, and it'll be tucked into these two corners. What I've got is a vertical bar of my sleeping pad on the left side of the pack and a vertical bar of my tent on the right side. And although this pack has a frame, if it didn't, these two vertical bars would create a lot of structure and help the pack to carry much better than normal. Not only that, but these two objects are two of the more heavier objects that you typically carry backpacking, so they're, they're kept close to your back thereby reduce, therefore reducing the leverage they have on you. All right, so now that we have those two vertical bars in there, 
we're going to take our sleeping bag or quilt, whatever you're using, and just stuff that down into the bottom of the pack. And what this does is creates a little structure, kind of creates a flat surface. It makes sure that the entire pack is pushed out so that it kind of creates a platform that you can add your gear on on top of that and just stabilizes everything. Alright, so to give you an idea here, it might be a little hard to see, but this side of the pack is a sleeping pad. This side of the pack is the tent, and right stuffed down in the bottom middle is the sleeping bag. And after stuffing that in, everything is held in place now, and it's a really easy bag to pack. So moving forward from there, I've got my clothing bag. And this has my down jacket, some other like long john spare clothing in it. A little heavy, not the heaviest object I have, but it is bulky. Also, another thing to think about is accessibility. Now, I'm not going to be using my clothing throughout the day, so I put it further down into the pack where I don't need to get it out. And again, you just kind of stuff it in, making sure it fits between the sleeping bag and then the two vertical bars, the tent and the sleeping pad. You can see that fits right down in there. Hard to show on camera here. But next thing you're going to take is your cook kit. And this is a pretty heavy little kit. It's got the fuel in here on top. So it's a little more dense. You want this closer to your back than as opposed to being farther away from you. So I take the cook kit and I just shove it right on top of the clothing, right against the back panel of the pack. Just like that, if you can see that. And from there, there's not too much left to pack. I like to take my food bag. And food's pretty heavy, it's pretty dense. So I put that against my back panel as well. And if you really wanted to pack your pack correctly, you could lower your food lower down in the pack, but still all the way against the back panel. And that will give it a little less leverage on you. But as for accessibility, I like to keep it near the top because I'm always going in there for snacks or food or lunch, stuff like that. And then right next to the red food bag here, I'll just take my mostly lightweight ditty bag, stuff it just beside that. It doesn't have a lot of weight, so even though it is farther out from the back panel, it's not going to put too much leverage on you. And once you have those in, you can seal up the pack and start to fasten it down. Now, once your pack is packed and secured, one thing you want to do is check out these compression straps that run along the side. These actually do have a function. So if your pack is a little loose out here or it's not fully packed, these are going to bring all of your gear and keep it closer to your back. So you just tighten those down. They don't have to be really tight. That's just going to make sure there's no extra space for gear to move around on you. Do the same on this side. And you can put your pack on. Now, as always, you start with your hip belt first. Get a good fit there. And you want your hip belt to be 50% above your hip bone, 50% below. That's going to make sure it doesn't actually slide down your hips and it stays on top of you, putting that weight right into your hips, not on your shoulders. Once you get your hip belt on, you can crank down your shoulder straps. You don't want them tight. And what I actually do is crank them down and then back them off a little bit just so I get a good pivot on the pack and the weight's not on my shoulders. Then you can take your chest strap, 
chest strap is more of a comfort thing. Not everyone uses them. Most people do. But it just kind of keeps your straps where you want them. And finally, you can take your load lifter straps, tighten those up. That brings the backpack close to your back, less leverage on you. And I like to pull them forward and then back them off just a touch so you have some good room on you. And that is how you pack a backpack. Thanks for watching. If you like what you're seeing, come check us out. We're Feral Mountain Co. in Denver, Colorado.